Welcome to Real Mob Stories with James Proctor. Today, I'm going to do a deep dive into a story that I've been working on the past month, and it involves Sammy Gravano and the 1983 rubout of a guy named Jack. I find this rubout particularly interesting because we don't have much information on what happened. I went through all of Sammy's uh, 302s, his court testimonies, his book Underboss, and I've spoken with several people, including Mikey Scars, and I had email correspondence with Sammy's team. What I'm going to do today is pull everything together that I have and give you what we know of what happened. This story about Jack started about a month ago when I released a short video on the rub out, and then Sammy Gravano responded that I got the story wrong, so I dug deeper into it. We'll conclude today's show with a discussion with a special guest on what he knows and what he believes is the true story. As we dig into the story, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to Real Mob Stories with James Proctor. And now on to our feature presentation. So starting off, I want to play for you the 60 second short video I did about the Jack rub out. And then we'll get into what Sammy Gravano said about this rub out as a response to me. Did you know that Mikey Scars was involved in a rub out with Sammy Gravano and Louis Molino in 1983? According to the 2006 testimony of Mikey Scars, he said that Louis Melito told him we have a piece of work to do because Sammy Gravano had a beef with somebody and that he got permission from Paul Castellano to take out this guy named Jack. Jack was described as a Gravano associate. Louis Melito wanted Di Leonardo to drive a backup car. After this guy Jack was taken out, he would be placed in a car trunk and Louis Melito would drive the car of the body to Ocean Parkway and 10th where Louis would leave the car with Jack in the trunk. Melito would have another person fall behind him so Malio could just drop the car off with the body and leave. The night Jack was rubbed out, he was in Doc's Bar in Brooklyn. Gravano was there with the rest of the crew and they took him out. Mikey Scar said they were sitting in a car about a block away waiting for Louis Malio to pull up. Mikey would use his car to block the street and create the diversion and they all got away. To this day, we have no clue Jack's last name and what he did to upset Sam Gravano. Okay, and so that's what I did uh, about a month ago and then uh, the next the next week, uh, what happened was that uh, Sammy Gravano said that I had gotten it wrong. And then now just this past week, uh, Sammy Gravano actually gave his side of the story of what happened. And, and this is really a response to me uh, digging into the story of Jack. So here we go. And I might stop this and make comments. Uh, let me say what you told me came in the email and what I responded to, he was talking about uh, somebody named Jack, who he said was with me, and I got mad and he was killed. That's totally not true. A guy, Mickey, a friend of mine, went to prison. This guy, Jack, was with him. Okay, so he's talking about Mickey Boy uh, Paradiso. Uh, Mickey Boy... Uh, has been around uh, since the 60s. He's, uh, you know, a, a big guy that in that Gambino family, he spent a lot of time in jail. Uh, he ends up being a capo by then, by, and the murder of Jack happened in 1983. And so by this time, uh, Mickey Boy was a capo. On record, uh, me and Louis Molino had a little bit of a split, and we weren't talking or dealing with each other. He was worried about uh, possibly we would be killed, and he pulled away. He came. So what Sammy's talking about there is, uh, if you remember, there was the Frank Fiala rub out that occurred in 1981 at the Plaza Suites, and um, you know that was an off the record hit. And so uh, Paul Castellano was really upset about it and wouldn't even speak to uh, Sammy for 19 days. Uh, you know, they were really worried that, you know, were they going to, was Paul going to retaliate? What was he going to do? And anyway, they had to sit down at a restaurant about 19 days later. And, you know, obviously they, they got out of it okay. It had um, Sammy Gravano and Louis Melito, and they met with uh, Tommy Bellotti and Paul Castellano. And, and so after that, point, you know, uh, Louis Melito uh, was pulling away from Sammy. Basically, the problem was, is that uh, Louis was worried that, you know, Sammy was going to, you know, maybe get his life in danger uh, because, you know, Sammy 
uh, would would do work like what happened at the Plaza Suites. So anyway, you know, their relationship never recovered after uh, the Plaza Suites. And then later on, what you'll see is that uh, Louis Melito was actually involved in business with uh, the Bellatis. So uh, both uh, Tommy Bellotti and his brother. But in 1983, it's obvious from what Sammy's saying that uh, the relationship, you know, wasn't doing well. Back to me and said that this guy, Jack, who was working for me as a bartender, as a favor, um, killed somebody who was with him. The guy he killed was a piece of shit. First of all. Second of all, I had refused Louis because to do the hit or be involved in the hit because first of all, I was mad at him. Secondly, he didn't belong to me. He belonged to Mickey Boy. And I told him that. The answer is no. And he's not my guy. He belongs to Mickey Boy. Louis Molito went back after that conversation to Tommy Bellotti and Paul Castellano. All of us were staying away from them at that point, but he stayed with them. That's a whole nother story and I'll get to that eventually. But he went to them and told, asked for permission to kill Jack. Told him he was a bartender in my place. Told him that he belonged to Mickey Boy. Paul Castellano called in Frankie DeChico and told Frankie DeChico before he gives Louie permission to kill the guy, he wanted to know if it was okay with Mickey Boy. Mickey Boy was reached. He said, I don't know if he did a piece of work off the record and whatever he did, if the wisdom's to be is to put a contract on him, then so be it. So he more or less gave permission. Um, Paul gave the contract to Louie and told Frankie to Chico, tell Sammy to help him and get this done. So now the contract came to me from the boss, Paul. The guy wasn't with me. I refused to do the hit, but now I couldn't. I set up in my bar. I was fuming with Louie that put me in this position. He had a guy, Rocky or somebody with him. I forgot the guy's name. I didn't know him well. Was gonna help him get rid of the body. And he was supposed to come to Tally's and help me kill him. When he went to get his friend with the car, me. Just wanted to, you know, make a note. I mean, we're, we're talking about something that happened in 83. So, you know, this is 40 years ago, more than 40 years ago. And so I know that in the testimony that Mikey Scars gave, he was saying that the bar was Doc's, which, you know, was Stymie, Stymie D'Angelo's bar. And then, um, Sammy's saying it's tallies. So, you know, I'm not sure if he's saying that um, Jack worked at tallies and they took him out at docks or or what it is. But, you know, I do have a question about uh, the bar because, you know, I, I hear docks uh, mentioned in the court testimony. And then you have Sammy uh, mentioning uh, tallies. Stymie, uh, Michael DeBat, we killed him. We rolled him up and put him in the trunk of a car, a stolen car. I waited outside, watching the streets. My guys cleaned it up. When Louis came, he says, we'll go inside. I said, no, you'll, you'll go, you won't go inside. It's done. And he's in that car. Here's a screwdriver. Kids around me robbed the car. We didn't have keys. You put it in the ignition and turn it and started the car. Here's a screwdriver. Go dump the body yourself. I was super fucking mad that he put me in this position. He left with the body, with this guy, drove the car, Louis followed him. There was no Michael the Bat, uh, no Mikey Scars to be seen anywhere around. Um, he said in a trial, which you said, he said in a trial that he was on 16th Avenue. The car was with the body was on 17th Avenue. Now, it sounds like one block. It is, but it's a long... So what I'm showing here is the, actually from the court testimony. So, you know, Mikey might have been wrong, 
I mean, I know Mikey said that, you know, I had the street wrong and that was the only thing that was wrong in the short, but you see here that it, it's mentioned as 16th and 16th Avenue. So, you know, maybe the transcription was wrong or, you know, through time it was, um, you know, whatever, but, you know, I believe 17th Avenue is the correct street because both Sammy and Mikey Scars is saying 17th. Uh, industrial area. It's a half a mile long. Michael, Mikey Scars was not around anywhere to be seen. Now, Louie would definitely told me if he was on the hit. He would have never brought somebody without telling me. That's number one. Number two, he was a tough guy and a killer, Louie. He would have never used Mikey Scars. Mikey Scars never, ever did a piece of work. In your testimony to me, you said that he said that on a witness stand. I don't give a shit where he said it. He was lying on the under oath then. Because he wasn't involved in this hit in no way, shape, or form. Um, and Louie wouldn't bother with him to begin with. It's a guy who never even did a piece of work. And he was going to take him on a hit with me, and I wouldn't know about it. It's ridiculous. That's what I was correcting um, for you. And I was telling you the legitimate story, what happened. So you wouldn't look like a fool saying what you were saying. So he wasn't with me. This whole thing that you didn't know, now you know and the rest of the world knows, or at least the people who are watching know the legitimate story. Okay, so that was, that was Sammy's response to me on his show last week about uh, the Jack uh, rub out, you know, a couple of things I, I do know is true. Uh, Louis Melito was definitely a killer. I mean, that guy was involved in a lot of pieces of work. Um, you know, everyone that I've talked to that knew Louis um, said that, you know, he's a good guy, but, you know, definitely, uh, you know, was capable and was involved in, you know, a lot of work for uh, Sammy Gravano. I, I know that that part to be true. Uh, now we've heard Sammy's side of the story, and now I'm going to bring on Jeff Canarsi to give insights from research he did on this Jack murder a couple of years ago. And so Jeff's very big on doing research, and it made sense to bring him on since he's already uh, went through a lot of this research a couple of years ago. So now on to my discussion with Jeff Canarsi of Mop Talk Radio. Hey, everyone. I'm here with my special guest and friend, Jeff Canarsi of Mop Talk Radio. How are you doing today? Good, James. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing really well. You know, I really encourage everyone to, you know, go to your YouTube channel. You've got uh, Mop Talk Radio. You know, I just really encourage people because uh, to visit you because, you know, you're really putting out a great content. You do a lot of research. You have a lot of contacts that, you know, most of us don't have. And then, you know, I'll tell you this about uh, Philadelphia. I mean, you have more knowledge of the Philly crime family than anyone out here on YouTube. And, and I would say even including uh, George Anastasia. So you do a great job. I try. You know, a lot of it is is despite the detractors because we all have them. I think yeah. I'm a little different from from the regard that. I do, you know, I read a lot of legal paperwork, but I know a lot of people too. I've been around a lot of people. So I, I, the only slight difference I think I have over people is that I sort of understand what makes them tick and I understand mm -hmm. the politics of it. And that's right. the only edge that I really, I think I, I have over everybody. As you can see, I'm wearing my favorite shirt today, Nikki Scarf. Oh yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I love the t-shirt. And so Sammy Gravano, I did a uh, short video about a month ago on this uh, murder that he was involved in about a guy named Jack, unknown last name, at least what the, you know, the media says. And what I found very ironic about the, about this murder was that you don't hear a lot about it in the I don't find anything in the court documents. Uh, you know, I know that, you know, Nick Shabetta, for example, that that part is um, sealed. And then you've right. got, uh, you know, Jack. And then there's like another guy that was uh, taken out the same year in 1983 named John Santiago, you know, and I don't know if Jack and John Santiago might be the same person or, 
you know, because the problem is that, you know, the you're not getting anything in Sammy's 302s about it. You don't get anything in testimonies. But uh, in John Gotti Jr.'s trial in 2006, Mikey Scars was asked about his criminal past. And then he talked about how he was involved in this hit with uh, where they took out this guy named Jack. And he was like a backup uh you know, he's, he's more of a crash car driver. And, gotcha. and so yeah. any, anyway, you know, they had this, um, you know, this happen. And so, uh, Gravano said, I got it wrong. And then I actually, I sent something to their saveable website. And then I got a response back from one of their, one of the girls. And, you know, he's just totally upset about this thing with Jack for whatever reason. I just don't understand it. And he's also, he was saying, I don't know how the hell he even knows about this and talking about me. And then uh, at some point he was even saying he would, uh, he'd give me the story on what happened. And, you know, I talked to Lee about it. It just didn't make any sense because I didn't think I would get the truth. And so I know he's really upset when it comes to Mikey scars saying that he was involved in it, but you know, Mikey, I don't think would say that in a testimony if he wasn't involved, it doesn't well, do why put any... yourself, who's going to put themselves in a murder. Nobody. Right. Right. You know exactly. I mean? So, I mean, he's very on edge about this thing with Jack and, you know, I didn't know. And I know what's funny is that it's nothing really new. I mean, you know, from talking to you today, I understand that a couple of years ago, you actually, you know, was able to get some inside information on, on some of this. And so I was just kind of curious what your take is on, on this guy, Jack. And then if that's the same guy as John Santiago, or, you know, I know there was a Jack Russo that was, uh, with, uh, Nikki, you know, Shabetta, the brother-in-law that was killed. So I, I just love to get your thoughts on this whole thing about Jack and this, and that murder. So years ago when I was doing some stuff on Gravano and, and it led to, mm-hmm. to, to files and everything, you know, one of the bigger lies, it, first of all, I think anybody that brags about being involved in 19 murder conspiracies is a pretty disgusting, despicable human being. Like right, right. that's not something I would particularly brag about, but right. He only killed, you know, not that not that we should ever grade a human being by their toughness, by how many they actually killed themselves. Mm -hmm. But in reality, he only killed, I think, two or three people. So, yeah, yes, you know, uh, but as far as this situation goes, I have come across that name, Jack, as well. Uh, Santiago, I'm about to tell you about here in a second. But Mm -hmm. one of the interesting things with some of the 302s that were released and even with newspaper articles that got released with the victims' names, you Mm -hmm. won't see Alan Kaiser, uh, who they called John Doe, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. you won't see Jack's names in those uh, newspaper articles, and you won't see Santiago's name in the the newspaper uh, articles either, which is weird because you Mm -hmm. think if you're going to mention everybody. So one of the things we have to address first is why – this guy has talked about Paul Castellanos cock pump. He's talked mm-hmm. about this. He's talked about that, but you mention a name and all of a sudden his antenna goes up. Why is yeah. that? Right. Mm-hmm. Because obviously exactly. it's something that he's insecure about something that mm-hmm. really bothers him about it. He has no problem yeah. lying about Alan Kaiser. He's done it mm-hmm. for years, still continuing mm-hmm. to do it. What's worse than killing a child? Really? At the end of the day, there Man. is nothing yeah. worse. So why right. is it something you said? gets him angry and so then you mm-hmm. move on to te- what was it was nick scabetta's was it nick scabetta's statements that were sealed correct yes uh, mm-hmm. okay okay just wanted to make sure i didn't yeah it was nick so, yeah mm-hmm. so you're gonna see that for two reasons number one you would see that if nick scabetta was an informant right if he's given information mm-hmm. they're gonna seal his documents mm-hmm. however if that were the case and he had been giving up information We'd have known about it a long time ago because more documents would have come out. He would have been known as CI-146, and he yeah. likely would have testified against Sammy and John mm-hmm. with the things mm-hmm. he knew. So right. I think we can take informant and push that sort of off to the left. So what right. would be the only other reason the FBI would seal those records? It's just so that everybody knows. I did three separate 302s, 
freedom of information FOIA requests on Sammy Gravano and Alan Kaiser, and the government refuses to give me anything. Okay. Mm. And a lot of reasons for that is because they know they were complicit in sort of covering that and burying it up. But right. just so that you know for future reference, if you ever do a FOIA request, mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. third time they deny you by law, they have to give it to you. They mm. have to by law give it to you. So I did the FOIA again with, with Alan Kaiser. Guess what? They didn't give it to me. So oh, the only way I can, wow. nope. So the only way I can get it now is by suing the federal government, which anybody can do. But mm -hmm. going back to the, the the case in point, the only other reason why that would be sealed is if there was damaging information about Gravano and any that Gravano could have sat down with them and said, listen, you're going to get me on 19 murder conspiracies. I killed my brother-in-law. I killed this one. But please, this cannot come out. And mm -hmm. what I believe it to be uh, is the fact that Sammy the Bull Gravano had a sexual relationship with mm -hmm. a bartender in Brooklyn who he killed. It was right. also a gentleman that Scabetta was also having an affair with. Mm -hmm. uh, and what the old timers had been saying for years, because I was really the first one to come on here and say Sammy the Bull had exactly. homosexual relationships, which to each their own, to each their own. Yeah. If that's your thing, right. fine. But the story that, that I was told was that there were a lot of narcotics being sold at this particular sort of bar. And that Nick Scabetta, mm. who was a heavy cocaine user, and everybody knows that, yeah, exactly. uh, was getting a little reckless with his behavior, was having a sexual affair with this guy, as was Sammy. And the mm -hmm. way the story was relayed to me is that it became to the point where Sammy wanted all of his businesses, especially his drywall business, his brother-in-law's mm. drywall business. Uh, he started to get reckless uh, with his mouth because he was high on cocaine, and he literally yeah. threatened to out Sammy Gravano was a homosexual. And that's wow. what actually led to sort of that going down. But that also mm -hmm. this person in the bar who was selling cocaine to other people began to tell people that him and Sammy were having sort of a thing. And when mm -hmm. Sammy found that out, Sammy had him killed. So yeah. he, he can debate that all he wants and deny that all he wants. But that has been the one consistent story that I have heard from guys that are still active today. And, yeah. and they're not saying it to be malicious. They're saying mm -hmm. it is because it was a publicly known fact. Everybody knew that. Everybody knew it. And I know also a few years ago, you what's interesting, too, is you had an article in the New York Post that was talking about, what, Sammy the Gay Bull, something weird like that. I can't remember the title. But, right. uh, you know, that kind of came out after you had done your investigation on this. And then um, supposedly Laura... Garofalo was going to do a book, but that book never got published. And so that article actually had Laura saying that, hey, you know, Sammy was gay, you know, and that was part of the, why this Shabetta was taken out. And, but she never wrote the book that I can find. Right. But I know she, I know for a fact, she's the one that gave sort of the, the paper, the, the, the sort of the headline to the papers. I knew that. Yeah. And I knew about that prior to her ever mentioning anything because that was one of the 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 so-called, I, I guess, secrets everybody knew that nobody really, really yeah. knew as far as like mm -hmm. just publicity wise. But yeah. it, it goes to the same log line of Sammy the Bull, you know, tells his story. Oh, I was a little kid and they took my bike and they said, oh, look at a little bull. Look at a little bull. That's <laughs> not why they called him Sammy the Bull. Sammy mm -hmm. the Bull was called that because he lived in Bull's Head, Staten Island. That's mm. how they distinguished him from other people in the in the crime family. So even on the basis of, like you said earlier, he just lies. That whole entire yeah. story about, oh, I fought six kids, it's all a lie. It's mm -hmm. all a lie. It, it, none of right. it's true. None of it. Not a yeah. single thing. And then who is it? So then you have this guy. Uh, we still don't. I guess what's strange, too, is this Jack guy. They never – there's no obituary, nothing out there about it. You know, that's a little weird, too. Don't you think? Well, I mean, if like the like there's the, like Greg Scarpa, right? Mm -hmm. They don't really they don't tell an, the accurate story of you know his demise and his sort of little fun things that he did behind the scenes because you cannot get a transference uh, from sharing a testosterone needle. You, right. you can't. So his story that he got it from a blood transfusion from somebody who was gay, it, it's not true. He right. had that virus from his activities with men, mm -hmm. too, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's right. noted in, in FBI paperwork. People want to see it. Email me, and I'll give you the paperwork on that. 
Uh, right. But it's you're right. There's nothing on this Jack guy. And it almost makes you wonder, why would they not have his full name in the 302s? Just Jack. Yeah. That mm-hmm. tells me he just made it up. I think mm. he just made it up. Or Jack and John are the same exact person because I believe both were allegedly killed in 1983, right? Yeah, they were. Yeah, so, exactly. In 1983. The they're, they're probably – uh, and if you really think about it, nicknames for John are Jack is Jack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't even think about that earlier, but that's that's a nickname. Yeah, it is. That's so, why I'm thinking maybe it's the same person. You know, I mean, what are the odds he kills two people in 1980? Well, I mean, I guess the odds aren't that bad of killing two people yeah. in '83, but no, nah, I, I, I yeah. they may be the same person. Maybe the yeah. same person. Yeah, and that that was all, you know, I've just been trying to find, you know, more information. I know Mikey Scars is supposed to do a story, you know, come out with a show on it as a response to what Sammy said this past week. And so, and that was the other thing. Sammy doesn't like uh, having Michael, Mikey Scars in that story. That really bothers him, you know. You know why he doesn't like Mikey Scars? Seriously. No. You know what his issue is? Do you? If you go back in history, right? Yeah. Sammy Gravano was never going to be the underboss or anything in the Gambinos. Mm-hmm. John Gotti was never going to elevate him to anything. It's only after the murder of Frankie DeChico that mm-hmm. he has – Frankie was going to hold that spot. Sammy right. was not anybody before that. He right. was a soldier in a, a crime family, but he wasn't a captain mm-hmm. at that point, I don't believe. I could be totally wrong. No. I'm sure right. Mikey would know better than me. But Mikey Scars was a guy who earned money the old-fashioned way. He was a mm-hmm. guy that was – and I'm not – you know how I feel about informants – but yeah, let the guy some a little bit of respect. He knew how to earn money. Mm-hmm. He didn't need to kill. He knew how to earn money. Sammy Gravano right. couldn't earn two dollars if he didn't shoot somebody in the back of the head and take it out of their piggy bank. And right, that's right. the truth. And he doesn't like Mikey Scars because Mikey Scars really take away the murder. Really, Mikey Scars is more of a gangster. He really mm-hmm. was. At the end of the day, because once you once you get past the wild, wild west of like 1985, 1986 and the murder stopped, the only mm-hmm. value you had to organize crime, unless you were Roy DeMeo, but that's like post Paul Castellano, uh, is you had to know how to earn money. And if yeah. you couldn't mm-hmm. earn money, what worth did you have? Look at all the gem steel. Look at all the companies that Sammy absorbed. Look at the profit margins prior and then again. So after the fact. They all lost hundreds of thousands of dollars every month. He had no clue what he was doing. He just right. killed to take them. And I think that's what his issue is. His issue is Mikey Scars, first of all, had John Gotti's uh, uh, affection, and he had John mm-hmm. Jr.'s affection. And that's something that Sammy could never get. It's right. something that Sammy could never get. And I think it's petty jealousy. I, mm. I think because – say what you want about Mikey Scars, you know, uh, you know, doing what he did – but the guy knew how to earn money and he was respected yeah. and, mm-hmm. you know, Gravano was feared by extension, not because Gravano terrified everybody, but they were scared of John Gotti. And the proof right. of that is the 19 murder conspiracies. Conspiracies mm-hmm. are, I tell you, this guy's stealing, you order his death, whatever the case may be. And really what's interesting, because nobody really mentions this. When you listen to the John Gotti wiretaps, which are very mm-hmm. popular to listen to, there is yeah. a conversation between John Gotti and Frankie Loke. And John mm-hmm. Gotti, the infamous, I told him, tighten it up a notch. How many com- how many uh, effing companies do you want to have? Mm-hmm. You got Jim Steele. Mm-hmm. You got this one. That's Gotti realizing too late in the game he's been lied to mm-hmm. because he turns to, to Frankie Loke and says, did this guy ever rob from us? He's like, no, I checked it out. I took mm-hmm. this guy's word for it. He's talking about Gravano. And so mm. when Gravano makes the lie-filled excuse of, oh, John was going to turn his back and, and make Sammy take the fall, that's not even legally possible. It, it's all BS. It's all BS coming out of him. And and when you're 80 years old like that, and you just keep repeating the same stories and then inventing more stories on top of it, he would have been done talking within a month. But, but I think mm. the issue, honestly, between his issue with Mikey is I think – just how Mikey talks, he doesn't talk like a a, a guttural pigeon. He, he talks with some intelligence. He talks with some education. Mm-hmm. He has admitted what he's done. He's not proud of what he's done. But the reality is, is that Mikey was an earner. 
And Sammy could mm-hmm. never be that guy. Now, Sammy will go nuts on me and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, I know 19 companies you took over that were very prestigious prior, and you basically lost all your money. So obviously, yeah. you didn't know how to operate a business. So I think that's what the yeah. issue is. I, I really and- feel. Because the only way that Sammy Gravano was going to rise in that family mm-hmm. was by killing people. That was right. it. That that's my belief. That's where I stand mm-hmm. on it. And if if people want to believe this fairy tale that that Vano was some psychotic, terrified everybody, yeah, I'm I'm sure that they, they feared him. I'm sure they did. Mm-hmm. And I don't mean yeah. to like speak out of turn and say that there's no reason to fear him. But ultimately, right. at the end of the day, the guy you got to fear is the guy at the top because he's the guy mm-hmm. that would allow this stuff to kind of happen. And I I just think that at every turn, Gravano was a snake with everybody. And then he mm. tried to bury Frankie Loke by lying about him saying he agreed to kill John Gotti. Come on. No, I just wanted to get your thoughts on on those couple of items. And so is there anything that you wanted to say before we um, close the show? Just head over to our channel and like and subscribe. And uh, that that's really it. And continue to support James. Uh, you know, when, when you first came onto the scene, it was like, okay, here comes another one. This ought to be interesting. <laughs> but but yeah. what's interesting is, there are people that jump into this genre very quickly and they don't mm-hmm. and, and self admittedly you'll say I, I really didn't know a whole lot about this kind of stuff just like Lee. Right. Right, right. But you've gotten better and you've gotten better you. and I peek at your videos once in a while and I'm like, "Oh, he's posting paperwork. Smart guy." Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> that's the one thing that you seem to understand that some other people don't who do shows and just say, "Well, th- it's because I say so." Mm-hmm. Listen, you don't have to like the content creator But if a content creator shows you a piece of paper and highlights it and says, this is a government document, you can't refute that. So, yeah, I I think that's I think that's what I think at first. Maybe that wasn't sort of like the direction you would go. But Mm -hmm. I think you have only helped yourself by doing that. Even Lee started doing it in the end. Yeah. (laughs) You know what I mean? So uh, listen, there is enough room in this genre for everybody. But the reality is I tell people all the time, do your research show documentation and don't be afraid to have an opinion that's unpopular and just be right. yourself. None of us yeah, again. No. And that's it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, I appreciate so, it. Yeah. I'm, and I'm I just want to be buddy. better every day. You know, that's what I want. Just improve every day is what I want to do. Yeah. And you're the nicest guy in the genre too. Like you really are like, yeah. you know, I know, I know you take crap from people and, and, and you are able to sustain that pressure a lot better than most of us. And I think yeah. that, uh, that's going to serve you in the long run. Uh, yeah. And I'm proud of you. You come a long way. And I think you're, thank you. You know, I'll be long gone out of this before, before, uh, you know, you, you've already searched past me, but I'll be long gone and you'll still be going at it. I know that. I just, like I said, you, you, you do research, you do things better than anyone when it comes to that. And, you know, I just really want people to come, go to your site, be able to, you know, see the, the good content that you're putting out. And, you know, I'm just um, really happy that you would willing to come on with me today. Yeah. I'm, listen, the, the old saying is like, and Lee will tell you this because Lee knows me pretty mm-hmm. good behind the scenes at this point. Most people, yeah. I won't, I, I won't go on their show. And a, and a lot of it is just because I think that there are tiers to, to, to sort of the organized crime genre. There's the mm-hmm. gold star who uses documents, guys like you yeah. and me, Jake Stoops, mm-hmm. RJ, some other people, even to do sometimes has used documents mm-hmm. in fairness. So, mm-hmm. uh, but then there are people that are just looking to start crap and to invent crap. And, and I think, mm-hmm. listen, you don't, you don't have to believe me, but, uh, Here's the, here's the document. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, I appreciate you allowing me to come on your show because I think you fully know that you're going to take some crap now, uh, but it's and, your show. And I don't have a problem with that. It's uh, that comes with the territory. And also if everyone because- likes you, that means you're not doing a good job. So you, you know, you have to uh, understand that and deal with, deal with criticism, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It comes with like- territory, but Thank you, James. Yeah. I appreciate you having me on. Yep. Yep. I appreciate it. And, and thanks everyone. Um, you know, I look forward to seeing everyone's comments. Uh, like I said, please, uh, visit, uh, Jeff Canarsi's mop talk radio, uh, YouTube channel, uh, you know, like, and subscribe over there. And also, um, you know, like, and subscribe here at real mob stories with James Proctor and, you know, hope everyone has a, a great week. Thanks everyone.